Now, the rest of the story. Once upon a time, there was a family that almost died out. Almost died out. The royal family of Great Britain. In 1817, King George III, the monarch from whom we broke free, was an elderly lunatic for whom reality had ceased. The prince regent or acting king was his son George. Now the regent had provided an heir to his throne in the person of Charlotte, princess of Wales. However, on November 6th she died. The regent's only legitimate child was dead. Well, ordinarily, that would just suggest that he and his wife get busy and produce another heir. Under the circumstances, however, that was impossible. The regent despised his wife, would have nothing to do with her. Nothing, not even for England. And so it was sadly accepted in royal circles. Regent George would become King George IV. But then he died. Now the British monarchy would have to be entrusted to a brother or sister. Sounds as though the monarchy's safe. You recall from your high school history classes that old King George III and his Queen Charlotte had 15 children. Surely one of those children had at least one child whose head might one day bear the crown, but wait till you hear. Three of the 15 offspring died young. That left 12. Five of the remaining 12 were daughters, two of them long married and childless, three of them unmarried and over 40. Well, that left seven, seven sons. The Prince Regent, as you've already learned, was out of the picture. That left six. The Dukes of Clarence and Sussex were family men with children, although their marriages were technically illegal. And that went for their sons and daughters. The wives of the Dukes of York and Cumberland had no romantic interest in their husbands and no children and no hope of children. And now we get to the Duke of Cambridge. At 43, he had never married, had never had a mistress, chatted and fidgeted incessantly. He practiced his violin relentlessly and wore a blonde wig, accidentally addressed as Madam, at least once that we know of. He tacitly dared those in his presence to refrain from laughing at him. It was not easy. So one duke remained. Of all of the 15 children of King George III, one stood between the throne and the end of the line. That was the Duke of Kent. Now, he was a tall, stout, vigorous man of 50 with a distinguished military career behind him. No, he was not married. Yet, as Great Britain's last hope, he got married. And he lived barely long enough to see his only child born. But that child would live to lend her name to an entire era, for she became Queen Victoria. So, although perhaps it had never come closer, the royal family did not pass into oblivion, and there is something else I, I think history would appreciate as a footnote to what I've just recited. You remember the Duke of Cambridge? He was this chatty bachelor, I'm trying to say this as discreetly as I can, who used to go around wearing a blonde wig, and uh, more than once he was addressed as, as Madam. He surprised everybody. He got married eventually and had three children. And it is he, it is he who is the direct ancestor of England's right now, Queen Elizabeth II. Now you know the rest of the story.